welcome to the Burkamp Wonderland and Arsenal podcast. I'm Guna Gimli, and tonight my guests are, first up, he's a really good bloke. It's Danny the GFP. <laughs> Oh, that's that's almost offensive. I'll have you up before the Hague for nonsense like that. Really? It's a world of political correctness now, Gimmy. You can't get away with that anymore. I can. Can you? I can I can and I will. Oh good. That's me told, isn't it? I'm that's good. the nicest intro you've had in a while. Ever, in fact. I was listening uh we were listening back to the podcast number twenty seven from December two thousand and twelve, I think it was. All the outtakes. It's a little bit sweary, people, but it was brilliant, wasn't it? Get down, dog. <laughs> I know. I, I did listen to it. It is very good. I, I advise everybody listening now to go and check the Twitter account and have a look at it. It's a it's it's a fun half an hour. It certainly is. Right. Next up, after sabotaging last week's show, he's actually turned up in person, although he's already sabotaged this one too. It's Welsh Justice, Jason Davies. Hiya. How are you? Oh, all the better for seeing you, mucker. It wasn't my fault last week. Blame Fife. Why? Why? How did this go down? How did it transpire? I, I had a voice. I had a, um, a WhatsApp message saying, Jace, do me a favour. Could you blah, 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 abuse Gimli and Danny? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. well, Mr. Fife, it would be my pleasure. <laughs> and then Danny was sending me a request to abuse you again. So, well, obviously, abusing you was just so much fun. Why is this, though? Well, it is. You're short, you're round, you bounce on the ground. Well, I was going to say, I, I haven't, but you you actually have met me. So Yeah, I know, I know. I, I think, said, you, I think you would bounce. Do you really reckon? Do. Yeah, I do. You're not at fat, but I just think you bounce. Least, at least I'm taller than Chris. Oh, you, mate, you're Magic Johnson compared to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you but, know... <laughs> little, Next fro- up. little Frodo from the Plymouth. <laughs> Some it must be something about pirates, I reckon. <laughs> right. Next up, throw another shrimp on the Barbie and grab some Sheila's. It's Aussie Dom. Do you want to be any more offended? Um, no, I'm I'm back by underwhelming demand this week. I was, oh, was I literally was inundated with two people requesting I come on. So you know you don't want to let down the fans, do you? Uh, I'd say we ju- we nudged Jeff Arsenal to have you on, but he he cancelled. <laughs> right, that's killed that then. And finally, our next guest is one of our podcast favourites. It's ex Arsenal goalkeeper Rami Shaban. Hello, Rami. Hello there. I bet you're wondering what you signed up for, haven't you? Yeah, I've done that quite a lot of times, but it's yeah, a pleasure. That's... We've been through a bit of a roller coaster with you in this show. You've, I think, what is it, your third or fourth appearance now? I think it's the fourth to be act. Yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. But it's, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, there can't be many of our rabble that you haven't spoken to. Now, hopefully you've enjoyed every uh, every show you've been on. Of course I have. That's fantastic. And right, he was then. the winner of our um, ex-pro um, guest of the year last season. He was. He was. With a big margin as well. <laughs> did, 100%. Did you... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did, did you even message Rami to tell him? Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we sent him a cake. Did we? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow, well, we, well, we go places. Right <laughs> then. Um, we'll start tonight then by... Oh, no, we won't. We'll start tonight by uh, going straight over to Danny with all of the scores and a loan watch. Well, the scores are we finished runners-up in the under-18 league to Chelsea, which is pretty damn good. We haven't played a game in the under-23 since we beat Reading 5-2 um, 10 days ago. I'm not sure what's going on with the ladies. And the only thing you need to loan, know about loan watch is Jack Wilshire has got a hairline fracture of one of his legs and he's out for six weeks. But we'll talk and, about that later. Yeah, and well, that's it. That's that's all you really need to know. And well, Chesney is having a stormer at Roma. Other than that, we can't go into too much because uh, old Welsh justice there will start kicking off and it's uh, it's like trying to get a tiger in a cage to get him to behave himself. So he's behaving himself, so we best move on before we rile him. Why, I'm a um, pussycat. Why, why can't we just um, try and silence him? Why, why must we have appease his anger? You've met him. Yeah. He wasn't that angry when I met him. Wasn't he? No. He bought me oh. coffee. I bought him a coffee. It must Did be you? Did he hug you? It was uh, Valentine's Day. We held hands. Yeah, it was. It was. We we skipped in. What's that park that we went there with all the daffodils? Lovely stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it says he was a tidy. 
<laughs> did he? You know, when you go and meet that Warwick Davis self for the Star Wars, was it like when, like when a normal sized person meets him? When when Jace met you, did he have to bend over really low and pat you on the head and ask you, "Does your mummy know you're here?" No, that was Chris. Oh, of course it was. Rock and roll. It was. Mm, happy days. Uh, right then, we will actually start tonight's show by talking about our two-one away win. Borough, let's go to Danny, seeing as you did a really poor loan watch this week. Oh, I know, I get, I get hate mail, don't I, from, from the Welsh Massive if I do it and upset their, their future king. At the game, I wasn't, the only decent thing about that game was I was playing three at the back, which I thought was fantastic. I, I've wanted to see it for a long time. Now I don't ever want to see it again. <laughs> That's a little bit like, um, yeah, like always, always wondering what would happen if you have a pint of orange and a pint of milk. Two of my favourite things. Don't do it. It isn't going to turn out well. Considering um, Middlesbrough are the lowest scoring team in all four divisions, they're the lowest scoring team at home, I think, is either home or away. I thought it was a pretty good game on their behalf. Um, there are uh, People, I think Chris and John, were waxing lyrical about the bloke Rune, who was um, able to kick every single one of our players. He had some of them in a headlock, giving them Chinese burns, taking their pocket money, and still didn't get a single bloody booking, which was unbelievable. But there again, it was the referee that um, Wenger allegedly assaulted in the tunnel. So that's why we've had absolutely nothing since that happened. Um, the only thing that really annoyed me about the game was Koscielny. When the ball came over, it was a little bit like when I'm playing FIFA and I'm under a bit of pressure and I've got the controller in my hand. It was like me controlling Koscielny. I go, oh, press all the buttons, overhead kick, when I meant just to header it out because Koscielny was terrible at clearing that ball. Nice to see Petr Cech back, having a good game. He's been... Uh, I think we've seen over the last few games, and no matter who you put in goal for Arsenal, we are a disaster because he's got bugger all to do with the goalkeepers. He's got mostly to do with the clown act that is our centre-backs and our and our defenders. Um, the Ox playing on the right-hand side, he's no Remy Moses, who did does exactly the same job at Chelsea at the moment, and has, has been a revelation this season. It was good seeing him running up and down that side, but the poor bloke, he cannot defend. That's not his job. His, his, his days of playing out on the right-hand side, for me, are gone. He is the man who needs to play through the middle. Uh, Xhaka, he got stuck in a few times, which was good to see. Didn't get a booking, which I thought he'd be certain for at least one red card, because the the referees and all the, the linesmen all haters. Holding had a pretty solid game because he hardly ever gets any games. It looks like um, we were wondering about Mustafi, what was happening to him. Um, I think it was either Jace or Dom told me before we started, he's out of the semi-final and he's got some kind of injury. So we thought maybe we were speculating that he wasn't playing in that game because he'd been dropped because he's had a nightmare second half of the season. Turns out it hasn't. Uh, I was really hoping that the Ozil Sanchez thing behind, if you're going to be a striker, what two people in the Premier League do you want playing behind you rather than Sanchez and Ozil? Those two passing you the ball, giving you the ball, chipping it, lobbing it, crossing it, passing it, back heeling it, reboning it, everything. But then you realise, oh, Giroud up front. What is the point in playing Giroud you up like front? You like Olivier Giroud? I, I, I do. I like it when we get the balls out wide and drift them in so he can be big hard man up front. Giroud should have played against Crystal Palace. He could have been Teke does. But he didn't. Him playing there, that game was absolutely pointless. I would have loved to see someone like Walker up front, who, or maybe even a Wobi, someone with outstanding pace that is going to just turn their whole team inside out with balls being slipped in through the middle the whole time from Ozil and Sanchez. Sanchez had a great game as usual. That free kick was a thing of beauty. And please somebody write this down and email me it because next time we have an, a, 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 um, a disagreement about who was the last player to score a decent free kick for Arsenal, that was the last one. I think that could be the last one we see for a very long time. That was absolutely perfect. Um, I don't think we're going to stick to this 3 5 two, this three four two. Oh yeah, here we go again. Last time I tried to do a formation, I picked twelve players, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was quite happy with the result. But you, you don't go to a, a team like Middlesbrough that are rubbish and only get a two one win. A win's a win. That's the most important thing. But I don't think we were overly impressive. And Wenger has come out and said since that he doesn't think he'll be going back to playing three at the back. And I thought, what a fitting time for Wenger to retire because he took Arsenal over playing three at the back. And I thought maybe he was going to play three at the back. And after the game, come out and go, and I've put things back as I found them. I'm off. See you later. But that didn't happen. No, it certainly didn't. Um, we'll stick to talking about three at the back. Um, Arsene Wenger said after the game, it shows you that I'm still open to change after all of these years. Um Dom, what do you make of those comments in light of that? Do you think uh, do you think that's a hint that he might be staying? Um, 
maybe it's a hint that he's staying. I think that he will stay. Um, I think that the club are probably just waiting for the right time to announce this, uh, the, the extension. I, I think a lot of people in and around the club and a lot of the journalists and things that seem to have their ear to the ground are under the impression that he will be there for another another couple of seasons. Um, and there's not really any succession plan by the sounds of things. And I mean, there's been a few whispers around the place about, you know, getting in a director of football and, and different bits and pieces, which I think would be really important, even if he does stay mainly because it, it helps with the succession plan, because any manager that comes in would need those things in place. It would be quite difficult to walk in and and have to kind of have all of those things brand new as you're trying to start off your job as the manager as well. So maybe he's been forced into accepting that it needs to happen for the for the benefit long term of the club. I'm not sure. But three at the back was interesting. Um, I mean, I think Danny's a little bit harsh. I'm not sure that you're going to expect miracles the first time that you try it. I don't think the players would have ever really done much of it, even in training. So um, it's. I think it's a good thing. I think it's good to see you know, I think everyone was reasonably pleasantly surprised with how Ox played out on that right-hand side. And, um, you know, it's another string to his bow, potentially, if we decide to go down that route a little further. I'm not sure that we... I don't think we will in the semi-final against Man City. I think we're going to stick with what we know and and we'll probably revert back to a back four, I would imagine. Um, I'm not sure. I think Hector Bellerin's been suffering a little bit of an ankle problem still. Um, maybe he was just getting a bit of an extra rest there with one eye on this semi-final. So I expect to go back to a back four. I'm not sure. What do you think of it, Jace? Uh, it, it was a typical performance of a team that a bit out of form. They're suffering with um, a, a lack of uh, confidence and changing to a new formation. You know, it, it was just typical of the situation we're in. I, I think, you know, Holding did, did well bearing in mind what well, he hasn't played for quite some time. Gabriel, I, I'm just not a fan of his, you know, I, I thought he did okay, but, you know, I don't expect much from him. I think Cashel and his bang out of form, but again, it's a new formation. That's the first time that they've played that under our end, so very difficult. You know, I thought Monreal and uh, Ox are full of endeavour. Which is nice to see. I want a bit more end product from Ox, to be honest, though. I think, you know, he's got it in him, he's got the tools, he needs to put it together a bit more. But um, I, I like him, I really like him. Uh, wow. Jacques and, uh, and Ramsey were nice and tidy without being spectacular. I thought it was ill. Oh, I, 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 I don't expect much of him at the moment. I'm, you know, I, I love him as a player, but I'm, I'm just not a fan at the moment. He goes missing too easily. I, I don't think he had as much. Bearing in mind him himself and Sanchez had a free role basically. You know, they they didn't deliver an awful lot. A lot of that can be put down to Barra defending well. To be fair, you know, there are two teams on the pitch, but um. All the all these bang of form, unfortunately, at this pe- present time, and you know we we need some things to reinvigorate us. Um, I don't know what it is. You know we've got a lot of good quality players there, but we're just not gelling. Is it the fact that they've lost all confidence? You know, and form is, is that the issue? But you know, I, we we we. We were tidy against the one of the worst teams in the league, and we still. How the hell did we manage to concede a goal? You know, know. It, it it was painful to watch. I mean, that was Koscielny not clearing it when it was yeah. simple. That my analogy, yeah. if he panicked and tried to over, I think he did he overhead kick it or something or miss. <sighs> he, it was he, horrendous. I, I can't remember. He gave it away cheaply, but he, look, he's he's had a bad season to me. Lauren Koscielny, he's a better player than what he's shown us this season. He gets away with it and awfully too easily, and uh, with with a lot of fans for me, you know they 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 overrate him massively. You know he's a quality player, but he should be playing better than he is. Um, but again, you have got Gabriel one side of you, and you've got Holding as a young player that, on the other side. That's got to play into his mind as well. You know I can't be overly harsh on him either. So I, it was a really bitty game, wasn't it? It was one that, as watching it, you struggled to get into because Middlesbrough 
were, they they outplayed us for the first you know thirty minutes. Um, it took a goal. I thought we were very dull starting. Um, in a way, I, I remember watching it and thinking to myself, "This looks like exactly the same team that at ninety minutes left Crystal Palace." And I thought that there could possibly be another ninety minutes of that team, but we didn't. We got a goal um, through Alexis Sanchez. Rami, would you have saved it? Uh, to be fair, uh, I was on holidays. I just got back from Dubai, so I haven't seen the game, to be fair. Uh, uh, but I, I'm hearing what you are saying about three uh, in the back. and uh, It seems like it's all about lack of confidence. Uh, and the thing is, like, at the end of the day, it's look at Chelsea. They play three at the back and look pretty solid. Uh, it's all about the quality you got. Uh, when it comes to Koscielny, uh, when you see him uh, play for France, he has confidence, he's really good. Uh, but changing in the back is, has never been good, uh, even if it's a good player. Uh, I agree with you guys that he's a top quality player, but there has been so much lack of consistency. Uh, and I'm curious, uh, how was, uh, I'm always reminiscing when I was at Arsenal and thinking, we never had those kind of discussions. I mean, I don't know, because how, how were you talking when, uh, around 2004? I mean, there was, you had 11 players, you knew who were playing, you, you see what I'm trying to say? You had a team that played for each other as well as the manager. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know I think, how, how the talk was for supporters' view. I mean, I think the big I, difference I, for me, Rami, watching is that when, when you would have been in and around that team, um, I think there were players that were able to hold each other accountable because everybody knew exactly what their role was. It was a very, you know, people used to say it was like a world class relay team. You'd be defending a corner one minute, and then the next minute, Pires and Bergkamp were scoring a goal. Yeah. And you knew you knew exactly what you were going to get from that team each and every week. Whereas the team at the moment, I don't think there's any, there doesn't seem to be any consistency in what we're trying to achieve. It seems like we're trying to just out football teams, yeah. And and teams are very sort of setting up very defensively and and understand what it takes to beat Arsenal, which I don't think we're a very scary team to play against. I don't think there's any fear factor in in the football that we play compared to to those days and. Yeah. I that's think that's what I it is as well. You know, there well, was so that's many. That's why. That's why I'm asking the questions. Uh, it's like, uh, it's, it's, the teams doesn't seem to fear the club Arsenal. I remember when I was playing, we knew we are going to win this, one way or another. We are winning it, and you see that when you are in the tunnel, like we played Everton at home, we played whatever Leeds or. It, you knew we were going to win this. And now it seems like it's even Steven, even against teams like Middlesbrough. Are you saying that maybe the passion is gone? You feel like the players don't have any passion or, or have lost faith in their abilities? No, I don't think it's about passion. I think uh, all the players who are out there want to win, of course, and uh, they should be more passionate now because it was a long time ago uh, the club won something big. Uh, it's. I think it's more about the quality, to be fair. And I don't think the boss have found the right team to put on the pitch in week in and week out. Because if you look at how many players have played and how he's trying to find a good way to win the games, I see so many different, uh, so many changes. Uh, from my time, uh, it was. You only change when uh, you need to rest players or if uh, someone was injured. But the backbone and everything was put there. But to I be understand. honest, Rami, sorry, we, we, we've lacked a spine all season. You know, we, yeah. he's he's um, uh, he, you know, he's chopped and changed the midfield so much since Santi got injured. Yeah. He's you know he's continued to play um, Francis Cochran, and I'm sorry, but he's a bad footballer. He's just a yeah. yeah. He came in. He came on a Monday, and within sort of a minute of coming on, he's fallen over again. You yeah. know, it, it, it's ridiculous. 
you know, you've got El Nene, who's who's going to give you seven or ten every game. You've got Ramsey, who's in and out with injury. You've mm. got Xhaka, who he doesn't appeal the cheapest red card ever against Swansea. I don't think he knows what he wants to do at times. And mm. and not having that spine has killed mm. us. Yeah, that's what I said the last time I was in the podcast as well yeah. with you guys, that the spine, you haven't had that for a long time. And I think that creates the mm. uncertainty around the players. Like, Koscielny could be one of those players, but who do you have in front of him? Who do you have uh, next to him? You don't have that spine. You don't have... I mean, of course, every player have a good, bad spell, but you don't get exposed at my time when I was playing, even if a good player had a bad spell, he didn't get exposed the way Koscielny does nowadays because you don't have the stability in the team. So, um, I've got a question. Right. I've got a quick question for Rami uh, around yeah. that Koscielny incident. That, I mean, if, if in your time there, if you conceded a goal, what's the first thing that you would have done? Picked him up. I mean. Of course, you you do bad things. Uh, to be f- fair, like I said in the beginning, I didn't, I haven't seen it. To be honest, so I can't like. But I mean, in general, if a good player does a mistake, it could be David Seaman, it could be Saul Campbell, or whatever. It's like because you had the momentum in the team, it didn't expose you that much. You see, you could do. Uh, I remember David Seaman uh, or Jens Lehmann. So, no, it was David Seaman uh, leads away. He gave away such an easy goal and we were one nil down. We ended up winning the game 4-1. And you felt that the players that was playing, uh, now we're going to help David. You see, it's like lifting each other up if someone had a bad day. Definitely don't see that in the current team at the moment, no, do that, we? No, that's what I'm trying to say. We we don't have that stability. And I think the boss, like, we don't have a VR on, on the pitch. We don't have that kind of leadership in the team at the moment. And Rami, what mistakes do you think we make? And if you were our number one keeper at the moment, what would you change? Oof, good question. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, I, I would miss someone like Vieira ex- extremely much. I mean, I think we need someone who, when it doesn't go that well, go in there and lift the other players up. I don't know. Today we have Chaka, he's new in the team, unexperienced. If you look at the top level, like the club as Arsenal should be, uh, you need someone who can lift the players around. I think I would miss someone like that. But I think it's in a lot of areas. I mean, you change so much things in the team, in the midfield, in the back four, on top. Who will you play on top? At my time, it was Thierry, Bergkamp, Canu, Viltord. It's like we never had an issue. But at, at the same time, saying that, we won most of the games so and you are you are more... talking about one of the greatest teams to ever yeah play in i know the so it's very, well, yeah so. so it's very difficult to say but all teams take united had a really bad spell uh but and they don't i don't see them having that team that is that strong as well if you look at their team uh so i'm a bit worried to be honest this season uh I think you need to do major changes. And that's why the reason when you were talking about the boss is he's staying or leaving. Uh, I think he's staying of that. That's one of the reasons. He don't want to leave the club. Uh, maybe first time in how many years? We haven't reached Champions League. Coming behind Tottenham is the first time in uh, 25 years. Yeah. Or 30 yeah. years. He, I don't think he will leave the club like that. No, I mean, the thing that, that worries me about the team is that we play so many times this season, the first 10, 15, 20 minutes, we'll be playing really well. And as soon as um, 
they get the ball off us, or as soon as, as they they score a goal, our heads drop, and then oh, our, the players' heads drop, and then they yeah. almost go into a sulk and go, "Well, that's not fair now. That, yeah. Oh, we're not going to bother." Whereas in your day, when when we had the Invincibles team, yeah. as soon, if if they even dared score a goal, or like yeah. similar to when we got a player sent off, that would rile the players and go, "Right, yeah. come on, let's get together and we'll show them." I, I think agree. there's that lack of passion, that lack of come on self belief. We can do this, and that is what is so frustrating, and it's just so un Arsenal like. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, and you can see that. But saying that, uh, it's again like you don't have the back, you don't have the players that you think should lift up the team. They first of all, they haven't been in the club for so long. Uh, and if you look, when I was there, you had Vieira being at the club for how many years? So many years. Mm. You don't have that consistency. But you were saying about how many players that season. I'm just looking. Um, nine of our main players played 40 games or more in that, that yeah. um, 2004 season. The only one who didn't yeah. was Gilberto Silva, who played 39, and yeah. Bergkamp played 29. But when you look like Lehman, 54 games, Toure, yeah. 53, Campbell, 50. I mean, straight away, Toure and Campbell yeah. are, back for, are back too. They yeah. played 103 games between them, and that's the yeah. kind of uh, solid reliability that, like you were saying, that you know yeah. who is going to be playing every single game. And so if you want it as another player, if you want to try and get into that starting eleven, you know you You've got to work your ass off, and even then yeah. you may not stand a chance. So when you do, exactly. when they did get a chance, they come in and did really well. You look like Sylvan Wiltor, who you mentioned. Six yeah. goals in 14 games. I mean, four yeah. goals in, in 14 games. So when he came in, he, he did really well. And then yeah. even people like Jermaine Aliadier, who yeah. uh, who got four, four goals in seven games in all yeah. competitions. So, yeah, that was, that was a no, good I point. No, I agree with you, yeah. Thank you. Uh, and I think that's the main reason. I mean, you need that consistency. Um, another question now, and Don will go to you. Um, we've all seen our defensive mistakes this season. Uh, do you think it's laughable that we have Steve Bold as assistant manager and our defending at times is absolutely woeful? Um, I honestly think that it, it's a systematic issue now where we were talking just before about, you know, Rami mentioning people like Vieira and you know, we've had Tony Adams and every single player in that era was a leader on the pitch. I just don't think we have that anymore in the modern game. I think things have changed so much and young players have, a, have you know, they're all millionaires by the time they're 17 years old. They don't they don't learn the, the on-field management style. And I think if you look around at the successful teams at the moment, you can't tell me that Tottenham's squad is better than ours on paper. You just, I, I think even a neutral fan would look at the people that we have at our disposal and would agree that our squad from head to toe, is, is a better squad overall than theirs. The difference that they have, I think, and this goes for Chelsea as well, um, even Juventus knocking Barcelona out, they're, they're drilled. They know exactly what it is that they need to do. So you don't necessarily need the on-field leadership anymore. And I find it difficult to blame players for accountability when they probably don't actually know what it is that they're supposed to be doing. So if you know exactly what your role is in the team and and everybody else knows as well and someone's not doing it, it's easy to point at that player and say, hey, you know, you're supposed to be over here when this happens. We know this. Whereas I don't think the Arsenal players get that kind of direction. And I'd be interested to know from Rami what it was like back then, but it seems like he still has the philosophy that we're just going to out football teams. And I think things have changed because of the way that players are developed now, that managers are enforcing systems. So if one player doesn't play, the next player comes in, that player knows that role in the team. And so going back to your question, defending doesn't happen to be a back four thing anymore, I don't think. I don't think you can rely on having a strong back four. I think you need a system in which the whole team defends from top to bottom. Now, whether that's doing what Klopp does with the press, whether it's doing what Pochettino does where he presses in midfield, whether it's what Chelsea are doing with their back three, it doesn't really, to me, make a difference who your back four are. I think we could have Manuel Neuer in goal and we'd still be leaking the same amount of goals because teams are just walking through our midfield. Teams are just getting goal-scoring opportunities so easily now um, that we saw a defensive masterclass from Juventus and that we know that if they want to, they've also got goals in their locker as well. So for whatever reason, Allegri has that team so well drilled and so well structured that everybody on that pitch seems to know exactly what they need to do in every situation of the game. And that's the thing that I think is missing from this current team. If you don't have the on-field leaders, 
then that kind of systematic approach needs to come from from coaching. And I don't think Steve Ball is going to be able to get hold of the team and do that by himself. I think that needs to start with Arson, and and he needs to sort of maybe, if he is able to, change the philosophy in which he is starting to approach the modern game because I think it has changed quite a lot in the last even five years. To back up um, what you just said there, Dom, I do actually remember when uh, Cesc Fabregas left for Barcelona, he had a little bit of a pop at Arsene Wenger. And didn't he say something along the lines of, it's nice to be at Barcelona where I now have a role, whereas at Arsenal, I was just told to go out and play. Well, with say- Fabregas, I guess I can see that because he did have the notorious free role at Arsenal. So maybe there's a little aspect of that too. But no, I do I do agree with what you're saying. I think I think Granit Xhaka even said something on international duty where he said that he's not really 100% sure what his role in the team is supposed to be. And I think that says a lot in midfield when we just don't seem to have um, accountability from from the players on the pitch because they don't actually know when someone's done something wrong. Uh, I, I, I can agree on a certain level. And uh, the thing is, like, at my time when I was at Arsenal, we didn't have that kind of structure, like you mentioned Fabregas saying. Uh, but then we had the quality. Uh, and so you saying that then it's all about quality then and the structure or is it the structure and do you feel we have the quality but not the structure i think we've got quality but not the structure whereas like you said that's that team had so many players that could self manage a game yeah. your vieras and your siemens or your laymans and the and the yeah. campbells and these guys that were able to identify what was going wrong and self correct yeah. every single player on that team was a leader and so I think that having a structure may have may have actually hampered a lot of those those players. Whereas now I look and think, even across all the teams, those Lampard, Gerrard sort of, you know, type figures in, in the game at the moment are sort of very few and far between. And it's like this new age of of player in the Premier League now that I think if you look around even even in Europe, the teams that are doing well are teams that have managers that that really hammer in these structures. Yeah. for the players to then be able to follow. And that takes away the need to have the, the leaders on the pitch. That's what Bayern Munich have done for ages. I mean, that's their, if you look at them, they are so structured. They know exactly what they are supposed to do. Mm. I but think, at the same I, time, I think we're missing Leicester a bit of an winning, element. And at the same time saying about quality and squad, look at Leicester who won last year. It's... They don't I think have they were the well structured. I think they were a very yeah, well structured okay. team, yeah. and they just went, "This is what we're going to do every week," and no yeah. one seemed to be able to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Um, we'll talk about Ozil and Sanchez then. Um, both have come under fan pressure uh, lately. Um, Danny or, or Jason, you haven't uh, spoken for a while, uh, fortunately. Um, how do you, <laughs> how do you think they performed? Um, I, 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 I sort of, I, you know, on a, if you're giving it out of ten, so to speak, I'd have given Sanchez probably a, a seven or a ten. You know, you, you you've got that. Yeah, to be fair to the pair of them now, it is a different setup. It is a different structure to the game. Um, we had plenty of possession, but we, you know, we didn't get the energy into the game that we needed to. Um. I thought Sanchez was his usual committed self. You know, I still think he's a bit of a selfish player. I, I you know, I think, he, you know, he when he wants the ball, he want he'll demand the ball when there are better players. You know, there are sorry, not better players. There when there are players in better positions at times, and he's a bit selfish in that manner. Um, I, I thought Ozil, I yeah, I don't think Ozil has been great since November. I think he's been bang average. And for a player of his quality, you know, it, it, it's it's very, very disappointing. You know, um, he took his goal well. Um, that was nice to see. You know, um, but to be honest with you, you know, the, the, the lack of confidence in the team, the lack of resilience we've had recently um, and the new, the new setup. It didn't really help. It's you know you you can't really you know give them a uh, you know be too harsh on them due to the new due to the new system played that night. 
And we're all led to believe that uh, Alexis Sanchez is deeply unhappy at Arsenal. Um, did you see him give the fan his shirt at the end? And uh, he looked, yeah, he, looked yeah. all, he looked all smiles. And I took to Twitter to uh, to tweet, obviously, my delight at, at the fact to see, just seeing Alexis Sanchez smiling. Um, and, and people were saying, oh, he gave the fan his shirt because that was his so ever many game. And he, he considered that the game that he'd be leaving or whatnot. Oh, so... Yeah. It's, it's, just... it's, it's all hypothetical, isn't it? You know, everybody's, you know, we, look, we've heard lots of rumours about him, OK? There's lots of rumours flying around about him. If he doesn't want to be at the club, go to hell. There's a door, ta-da. I don't give a damn. You know, I, I, look, I, I'm sure Alexis Sanchez is a is a guy who gives his all on the pitch. You've got to respect him for that. He's a guy who knows how to work the cameras as well. OK, lovely of him to give the kid a shirt. Um, you know, I think that's nice. But, you know, how many times is he straight down the tunnel? Mm. He, yeah, he, he picks and chooses his moments. So, you know, I, I'm not going to blow the sunshine up his ass for it. Lovely stuff. Um, also, uh, Danny, we saw Sanchez give uh, Ox a little kick up the bum at the final whistle. Were you, were you happy to see that? No, no. Of all the people I would like to see kicked in the bottom, it is not the Ox. For me, the Ox is one of the most promising. And like Gav said last week, he's one of his favourite players as well. Um, he's now started to come and play in the centre of the park. And um, people have been said we've been crying out for a, a two-footed uh, passing attacking player to replace Santi while he's uh, on his deathbed. Now we know that um, the Oxes can is uh, can use either foot. I'm not sure if ambidextrous applies to feet, but hopefully it does. So he's brilliant, and he's been trying his his heart out. And when he came on in one of the recent games, I think it might have been against Crystal Palace, he came on and he was magnificent. He, he's one of the the bright shining stars of this season. One of the only positive things where uh, every year we say has this player improved, has that player improved? He's definitely improved, and that's why Man City are sniffing around him. Apparently, it's all paper talk, but 35 million quid for someone who is now getting into the England team, um, much like when Jack Wilshere used to get into the England team, um, he wasn't getting in the Arsenal team. So it does amaze me how these things can happen. But I think we've got to make sure that we start playing the Ox in the right position. But yeah, there's plenty of other players on that pitch that night that needed to be kicked in the bum rather than the Ox. And, but it's and, good. I suppose it's good that maybe Sanchez is taking over the, some kind of fatherly captaining role, maybe like saying uh, I, his, his opinion on football is going to be much better than mine because he plays the game. So maybe he did the right thing, but that, uh, there's a whole line of people I'd rather have seen him boot first. And, and talking of the Oxdom, um, there were reports coming out that he might have been nearing a cl- uh, move to Liverpool or wanting a move for Liverpool or even rumoured Liverpool interest. Um, what do you make of this transfer? Surely it, we'd all hate to see him go, wouldn't we? Yeah, I mean, I think the only reason that he probably would go is if he wasn't getting the game time at Arsenal, which he sort of is at the moment. I know that at the start of this season, he even said that this was a bit of a defining season for his career. Um, But I think, I don't think at that time he was thinking that the options were going to be Liverpool and Manchester City. I think he was probably talking about going somewhere a little lower down to get game time. But I don't know. Obviously, paper talk and it's hits and clicks and transfer stories obviously sell a lot. Um, but I, again, I'm not sure where his contract situation is. Is he in the same boat as Ozu and Alexis at the moment last year coming up? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's where a lot of this talk comes from, doesn't it? It could just be leaked by management to get a better deal from Arsenal since he's in a bit of good form at the moment. You know, that kind of thing I'm sure happens quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally understand. And of course, the other bit of news for this week is uh, Jack Wilshire's um, leg break, which we'll, we'll talk about Ramsey as well, because Ramsey gave the chest down to Ozil for the second goal. Um, obviously, you know, Ramsey, Ozil, they, they're players that have got it in the locker and can do it. Um, Jack's leg break probably for, uh, further cements the fact that Ramsey's going to stay. Um, Rami, what, what do you make of Ramsey and Wilshire and that whole situation? Where would you go with that? Would you uh, would you consider selling either of, uh, of those two or buying in fresh? Uh, I think uh, you need to buy in fresh and... <sighs> It's easy to say now when we are not playing good, but I think if we would have been having a good season, I would probably have said keep them. But I think not nothing against them, but I think we need to shape up the team. I think we need to, like, now we have the finance to do that. And 
I think I would have done that. I think so. I, and we'll stick with you, Rami, and I'll, I'll do a bit of a, a, a Q&A with you. Um, Danny, I know you've got some listener questions, and I'm sure the boys on the podcast tonight have got some questions for you as well, Rami. So we'll um, we'll do this bit. Um, my first question to you is, um, do you think that Arsene may have lost the dressing room? No, I don't think so. OK, that's fair enough. That's short and sharp. Um, yeah. If you were in the dressing room, what would you do? Obviously, you've said um, there's a lack of leaders. Would would you uh, want to see someone come in with a voice or would you maybe try and be that voice yourself? Uh, I would have tried myself, but that's me. But uh, I think that's the boss's main target if he stays for next season to get someone that is a clear leader. Uh, leader sorry, Maybe not the football skills, but let's like United took in Slatan. He's a clear leader. I think you need someone that shapes up the team. I, I would have. That would be my first aim, my first target. Do Do you think as well? Um, obviously, from playing under Arsene Wenger, and um, when you lost a game, do you? Did he get in the players' faces? Was there, Were they made to feel accountable? Well, I guess the question to you would be, do you think maybe the attitude of the players uh, is down to not being feel to made accountable of the result? Do you think, you know, they all go home, oh, well, we lost, that's it. Maybe a bit down for a couple of days, but go again. There's no one really shouting down their throats. Like we've, we've all heard about uh, Alex Ferguson at, at Manchester United and when they lost a the game, boy, did they know about it. Do you think something like that would benefit the players? Uh, I think it's about, it's like we said earlier in the programme that uh, I think the players are not like the players when I was playing. I mean, we knew when we had a bad game. I don't think the boss needed to come and shout at us because he had that in the group. He felt that every single player were so disappointed when we lost a game. He didn't need to waken us up. I think uh, the times have changed. I think that's what he needs to do. To, but that's not his kind of leadership. I mean, he have, and, but I would have rather see him like, because at my, my time at the club, I hardly never saw him. He was so disappointed and sad. Like, he was quite childish, to be honest, when we lost. He was like, he wasn't the one that slammed uh, the doors and everything and shouted at us. He was, you didn't want to like, you saw on him. I mean, it's like when you raise your kid at home. If you start to shout at him, sometimes silence is the best effect. Mm. And I think that's what he showed us when I was at the club. He didn't have to shout we knew that he was so disappointed. Hmm. That's, that's very interesting. Um, Jace uh, or Dom, have you got anything you'd like to ask Rami? Obviously, it's very interesting times and a lot of uh, uh, the, the spotlight is on Arsene Wenger at the moment and uh, it would be nice to try and know about his character and, and whatnot. Anything you've got to ask Rami? Yeah, uh, Rami, Lee Dixon has been uh, quoted as saying that we are the worst team in the league when we don't have the ball. Um, you, you know, our, our guys don't know what to do. We don't know how to set up. You know, surely now Arsene must have seen, and you know, especially with recent performances, and even at the beginning of the season, you know, we, we had teams like Borough in the home match and Burnley away rip us apart at times, where even though we had the majority of the ball, you know, on the time that they did have the ball, we, we we just did not know how to react. We did not know how to how to um, uh, set up, etc. Yeah, did, did he do much work with you guys without the ball back back when you were there? And you know, if he's not doing that work now with the team, which you know it's it's fairly obvious he's not. Yeah. Um, you know, 
how what do you put that down to? Because I I, I find it, you know, I find it very bizarre that a man of his footballing intelligence does not work on that side of the game. Yeah, uh, the, at my, my time we worked uh, quite a lot with that. Pat Rice had uh, drilled the back four uh, when. Uh, uh, the midfielders and strikers were training, um, uh, finishing. Uh, and then when we... Uh, but we at the same time, I think we defended like pretty well. I mean, we, we knew, again, to talk about, we knew what we were supposed to do. And I yeah. think this is a new situation for the boss as well. Uh, coming from behind, like... Uh, now he have like the last twenty years he have never been in this position. Yeah, and I think I think that's for him as well. I don't think he don't have the key for that at the moment. He, I agree, he's very intelligent and everything, but I think this is a whole new situation for him as well. Right, because I, I just find it strange, you know. I mean, yeah, okay, back in the day you'd have done work with the back four and the keeper. I mean, but, you know, surely nowadays we should, you know, as Dom alluded to earlier on, you know, you defend as a team. So, you know, yeah. it's got to start at the tip. Yeah. It's got to start up top and, you know, we, we should be drilling as a team without the ball because, you know, I, you know against City, you know, away, we, you know, we, we, we had very little of the ball and you know, we just looked so poor. Yeah. And I think the other teams, uh, again, at my time, we had the ball quite a lot yeah. comparing to the other teams. We didn't have to defend that much. Uh, so nowadays, this team have to defend much more. But I don't think he have put... Because he, his football philosophy is offensive football and has always been. And this is something new for him. I think, uh, I don't know if Steve Bold, but like we said earlier in the program as well, I think it's, I think they are frustrated because, of course, all teams have bad spells, but I don't feel we have come through those bad spells in a convincing way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, um, I, I understand the question, and it's a very good question, but... It, it, it's, it's just one of the things, you know, I, I look at the stats from Monday night. We're playing one of the worst teams in the league. Yeah. You know, we've had 65% possession. Yeah. We've got off 492 passes as opposed to their 216. Yet they've had 13 shots as opposed to our 12. Yeah. And they've had five shots on target as opposed to our four. Now, with all that possession, yeah. with all that, surely we should be outperforming them in the stat zone as well. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. And then there, and I know the boss is very like uh, uh, looking into those stats. He's very, uh, how do you say, he's very into, he's very. Oh, how do you say that? Concerned? Uh, I th yeah, I agree. He's very concerned. Uh, and I think he's frustrated as well that uh, because we don't get it together, we are not as solid as we used to be. We are like... And I think it's a lot of because of all those changes as well. We, we, we don't have the same team on the pitch. And we don't know, like we said earlier as well, that... Like, Every player should know their role in the team. And I don't think they are 100% sure. And that's why you, it looks like you don't defend, because you are not gelled together. Yeah, that's a good point. You, know, you, you, you see Xhaka, uh, you, you see Ramsey, you see El Nene at times. You, know, you look at sort of the El Nene Xhaka combination yeah. against West Ham as opposed to Palace. Yeah. Yeah, it's a totally different performance, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And, and and I think that worries the boss a lot. Yeah. But I don't, think, I don't think he have the key right now to solve the problem, to be fair. 
I think there's been a big shift in the style of football over the last few years across Europe that's been successful. The the high possession Pep Guardiola type of football that we were also playing has yeah. has almost been overtaken by like a defensive counter attacking. Leicester did it all year last yeah. year and won the league. Real Madrid did it as well, won the Champions League. Um, you know, he Pep wasn't able to get very far with Bayern Munich doing it uh, as far as Champions Leagues go. Juventus just knocked out Barcelona, who are a very high possession team, I think. Um, and I mean, Chelsea this year as well, they don't really value, you know, 600 passes a game. It's it's no, about exactly. efficiency. It's about transition of football yeah. and, and speed and pace and power. And and I think that's something that, that we're lacking. That's how you win too. the games. Mm. That's how you win the games. It's not about passing. I mean, look at uh, Barcelona. They were outplaying all the teams before and won all the games. It's not the same today. No. Danny, is there anything you wanted to ask Rami? Yes, a question that is, uh, I don't think we've ever talked about before on the pod. Um, our Chris is a massive shirt collector. He has got every single Arsenal shirt virtually for the last 30, for the last 30 years. What are you laughing about? I'm nonsense. sorry. A, I no, just, when, in that, in that, um, that double season in 2004, you wore the shirt number 24, which man, what, did you wear 24? Yeah, I did. Yeah. How many shirts did you get to keep? Was, did you have the same shirt every season? I mean, every, every week. And did you have you got any of those shirts left? And then over your career, have you got a shirt collection? Because there's a lot of people. Oh, is he, is, he, is he begging for shirts? Me? No, Chris. No, no he isn't. Chris doesn't even know I'm going to ask. I'm just, I'm just curious. As, as a footballer, yeah, yeah. I've got uh, to keep shirts. I think it's very I individual. I think a lot of players, uh, for me, I could have changed shirt uh, if I wanted every game uh, I didn't uh, I'm not in I have a few shirts uh, mostly like uh, from the national team when we played England I had Sol Campbell's uh, number what what was the number 46. 12 I think oh. or had he six I don't remember and I said always wore five for uh, England and yeah. six for Arsenal yeah, and I have a Fabregas shirt from Spain. And uh, I have a few shirts, but I was not uh, that addicted to shirts. I have a few shirts from my time when I let all the players uh, sign it, the Arsenal shirt. I have, have a few of them. Have you got them up on the wall? Have you got them framed? Uh, <clears throat> few of them. Not, yeah. um, and then I have Casillas shirt as well. Oh, nice. Uh, when we played Spain and uh, we won against Spain that time. So that's, then that's why I have the shirt because uh, we won against Spain uh, in, with Sweden uh, the time when they were so good. They haven't lost for ages and they lost to us 2 0. And uh, I have that shirt as well. But I'm not into, I have a few of my own, of course, uh, from the days. Yeah. Oh, good. See, it doesn't all have to be doom and gloom. There are other parts. No, no, I mean, uh, it's all different. I mean, Freddie didn't uh, change shirts uh, when I was there. Maybe he did before I came to the club. Yeah. But uh, at my, when we played together, he, he was not uh, so interested into that. A lot of people wanted to have his shirt, though. Yeah. So. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um. Yeah, so uh, Chris is probably smiling listening to this. Um, <laughs> the other thing I want to ask is this season, I have been amazed at the number of goals and assists that we're getting. Sanchez, 23 goals, 18 assists. And then Ozil, 11 goals, 11 assists. And then our, our, our backup striker, 13 goals, 6 assists with Giroud. All these players with all these goals. Looking at that, you would think that Arsenal would be fighting for the title, wouldn't you? No. It's yeah. just it's just so annoying. I'm looking back at previous season. Um, at the moment, um, Sanchez has got 23 goals. He's got one. If he gets two more goals, then that's going to be our third highest overall goal score in the last decade. Only behind um, Adebayor had 30 and Van Persie had 37. And all those other seasons, we we did so well. Always top three or top four. Or recently, we've we've won some cups. But it's just annoying me that people moaned in recent seasons that Özil isn't being selfish enough. That he wasn't having enough shots at goal. So then the one season that he does, everyone's saying that he, he's just having a terrible season. It's just the stats like that. They they just annoy me. Do you think Do you think Özil is going to stay? And what do you think about Sanchez? Is he going to stay? 
Uh, I know as much as you guys, but... Make it uh, up, then we do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Obviously, I, you I like think, both to stay I think one you. of them will leave. Yeah. I think so. I think... Uh, uh, I think they are pretty disappointed with the the season, but of course they have to look at themselves as well. But players, most of the time, think about themselves these days. Uh, <laughs> they do actually, but yeah. uh, I think um, I think one of them will leave. Sad. I hope it's not Sanchez that leaves. Mm. Right. Can I move on to the... Uh, Kimberly, did you know this is now two shows in a row we've had somebody live from Sweden on? We had Jamal. Jamal, the English bloke, living in Stockholm. He was on the radio show in the week. Oh. Okay. We're slowly taking over Sweden, people. Yeah, Stockholm. <laughs> We're flying the, uh, the Swedish flag here at ABW. We are. Yeah. Um, right. So the question's for you from the listeners. Nil Star, she says... Is Ospina off? If so, who would be a good replacement? And is Czech now too old to be our number one? No, I think Czech can continue to be our number one. I mean, uh, uh, but uh, I don't... It's... I would see Peter Czech... But again, we said that earlier as well... Uh, it, it doesn't matter if we have Neuer in goal. We, we, we need yeah. to, like, have the solid team. And I think uh, the right man to be in the back is Peter Cech at the moment. And do you think Espino is going to stay around because he's a decent goalkeeper? He's his country's number one, isn't he? Yeah, he is. And I think he will stay as well. Ooh. I think so. So there will be no replacements. OK. Um, James I don't Co- think so. James Cooper says, did Rami prefer to play with a back three or a back four? Back four. Well, I think it was when you were playing. Yeah, did you ever play four. with a back three? Uh, not that uh, Arsenal. I have tried it in uh, different cl- uh, other clubs, but uh, I prefer back four. Uh, it feels more uh, solid. Yeah. Uh, okay. must, it must have been nice to have Gilberto and Vieira in front of that back four. Yeah, <laughs> it did. It did. They cleaned up quite a lot. And that's uh, what I'm saying. I, that's what I miss at this. If if we would have had Vieira and uh, Gilberto, you would have seen a total different Koscielny. I, I agree. I agree big yeah. time. Well, I'm just looking at when you made your debut for Arsenal in um, 12th of November 2002, 0-0 against PSV Eindhoven at Highbury. Yeah. And uh, Oleg Luzhny was right back. Pascal Sigan and Igor Stepanovs were centre-backs, <laughs> yeah. which are two, two of the most um, under, um, overly criticised <laughs> yeah. players in, in Arsenal history. It also says Colo Toure played, so I don't know where he would have played. And then yeah, had, but he uh, was sent off. <laughs> So really? Remy must have made yeah. 400 saves that game with that <laughs> goal. For. He, he was sent off after like 10 minutes or something. Yeah, that's all he, uh, yeah. that's all he two yellow Des. cards. Yeah. That's all he did, Des Nelson Vivas. Yeah. But then you don't you don't need to worry because you had um, Perez on the left and yeah. Patrick Vieira in the middle and Thierry Henry yeah. out front. So. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, listen. and the thing is, it was quite a... It was so nice to play the, to get that debut, but at the same time, if you look the people you mentioned in front of me, it's because we were already through to the second round, and uh, PSV uh, had to uh, win that game, so they had a lot to play for, and uh, and we <laughs> we played with ten men for eighty minutes because of uh, Colotori got sent off with two yellow cards, so. Uh, but it was, of course, a uh, evening I will never forget. And then your next one was uh, against Spurs, and we beat them three yeah. 0 at Highbury. Yeah. And then that time you had uh, Pascal Sigan and Sol Campbell playing in front of you with Lucheny and Cole at fullbacks, and then yeah. Vieira, Burkham, Henri, Will Tord, Sil, uh, Gilberto, and Lundberg. Wow! Yeah. And was that's that, that uh, the game when uh, Thierry made that amazing goal when he ran from the whole pitch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's where the statue of him comes from. Is it? Do you yeah. uh, do you still hate Spurs, Rami? Yes, is it I just do. is it is it just something <laughs> that just ingrained in you as soon as you step foot 
you know. No, so but that's something you realize when you get come to the club. Like Spurs, you don't lose to Spurs. Mm-hmm. I love it. Shame some of the current players don't realize that. No. It's just very sad. Right, yeah. getting back to the um, to the listeners' questions. Um, from Craig Murphy, how difficult was it to adjust to more pressure and the quicker speed of the Premier League compared to playing in the Swedish and Egyptian leagues? It was actually easier, to be fair, uh, because I played for such a good team. What did uh, Zamalek you played for? Yeah, Zamalek and for Juru Garden in Sweden. Yes, uh, th- those are two good teams as well. But uh, I got that question quite a lot of times. It's like it's comparing to playing for the first team or the second team at Arsenal. Uh, it was sometimes more difficult to play the second team games than the first team games because you had good, better players um, around you. And when it comes to pressure, of course, it's more pressure on you, but I never had a problem with that. I loved that when I had the pressure. Uh, I performed better uh, when uh, it was big games. Uh, like derbies, for example. I never in my career lost a derby in Sweden or uh, uh, England or, yeah. Rami, how do you fancy playing for the Arsenal in a couple of weeks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would love to play against Tottenham. Tottenham. Oh, oh come on, let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah. You still got you still got some good years left in you. If you were at some other clubs, you'd still definitely get a game. Yeah. Are you doing any coaching Thanks. at the moment anywhere? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, my missus uh, works uh, weekends and often evenings. So oh. and it's difficult to get it through. I mean. I have to, if I would have to start to do some coaching, obviously I have to start to lower teams and they often here in Sweden practice in the evenings. Yeah. The Barbican Pirates are probably going to look for a new coach (laughs) at the end of the season. Yeah. I could take care of the defensive part at the club. Well, if you are ever in England and you ever want a game, you let Chris know and you can play for the Barbican Pirates because he, he's the owner, the chairman, and the manager of the team. And oh, is he? He is. He owns yeah, everything about, yeah, for the well. team. But we are about yeah. to sack him. Carpenter. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's yeah. about to be sacked. Um, we've got a little uh, hashtag going on, which is actually uh, Crexit, which is <laughs> oh, Chris's okay. exit from the club. Yeah. Um, no, he really does own the team. He, he he founded it about four years ago, and he's in charge of everything of the team. So I, I know sometimes it's hard to tell if we're joking or not. And if you were in ever in England, and I'm sure yeah. he'd let you give you a game because I think his goalkeeper is a bit fat and useless. <laughs> I think they lost nine one the other week. Oh, but to be fair, Rami, he, he lives in Plymouth, and it's not nice down there. Oh, I have <laughs> been there once, <laughs> and I won't return. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your gloves and your boots, and you'll yeah. get a game. Rami, just out of curiosity, um, do you think that uh, fluorescent boots make a better player? This is just your. This is Chris asking. (laughs) Yeah, say again. Uh, Do you think fluorescent boots make a make a player better? What? Bright yellow boots, ones that glow in the dark. Oh no, I like the black ones. Uh, There you go, Chris. Your your fancy boots can't even save you. No, I'm old style. Yeah, Chris, like if, if they're pink that. or they're blue and they've got yeah. um, light up, they've got little yeah. stars on the side, he loves it. He can't get enough of it. Oh. I'm surprised, I'm he's, surprised he's he hasn't. Yeah, he's got a pair like the kids do with the, with the, with yeah. the lights at the bottom where every steps around, doesn't he? Yeah. That, that, no, I don't. I, the thing is, I don't like uh, the plastic boots. Uh, I prefer the leather ones. The mm. ears old school. And all the old. boots today are plastic. All well, they, only, they only last a few games as well. Yeah. They're, there was actually rumours um, that because Chris had filled his wardrobe with so many pairs of football boots, he was looking to re- relocate the Pirates to a concrete pitch and he was going to buy himself a pair of Heelys. Um, <laughs> and live in a caravan. And <laughs> live in a caravan on the side of the pitch. But it he... really is budget football, Rami. But he yeah, but get, that's he lovely, get... though. <laughs> not when you're watching the Pirates. It's not. They lose every week. <laughs> No, they don't. They're I've got a bad. saying for Chris. It's all the gear with no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Poor boy. Right, back. We've got two more listeners' questions for, yeah. for Rami, and then we've got Shoot. questions for everybody else. From Bobby Check Your Booty, he says, do you think this back three is permanent one, or will uh, Wenger revert back to the 4-2-3-1 system? I think he will revert back. 
I Do you know why he, he went to three at the back? Was he trialing it or no players? No, or no so I don't know. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm so surprised. Um, I think I, I think he did it because he was trying to show people that he can yeah. change and he can put out a different formation. Yeah, but don't you think he would have done that better in a home game? That's yeah. true. Yeah, you would have hoped so, because that's almost like yeah. five at the back at times. I think it would yeah. have worked a lot better if we'd have had Bellerin playing at right, at yeah. right uh, wing back. Um, right, final question for you is from Pete Gooner, friend of the pod. He said, should Arsenal keep Chesney for next season? Uh, I don't think he will come back. Mm. I don't think so. I, uh, I have difficulties to see players who have been on loan to come back and do it better. Thank that have bullshit. happened. That have happened, but I don't think it's... Very rare you see players who have been on loan coming back. Saying that, of course, it have happened that players have been better. But if you look statistically, I think I don't have any statistic on it. But I think uh, you're right. They usually leave for a reason on loan, yeah. usually to wait their contract out or to try and put them yeah. in window so somebody wants to buy them. Yeah. Right, Gimli. Do you want to do another section now, or when? Just let me know when you want the rest of the questions for you lot. No, let's go into some listener questions now. I mean, we've covered uh, the game pretty much. We've covered Jack Wilshire, talk of the Ox uh, to Liverpool. Unless there's anything else anyone can think of, news of the week that is uh, relevant? Why? Well, I, I can't think of anything. OK, let's do listener questions then. Okie dokie. Right, um, this one will go to the Welsh wonder, oh, the other Welsh wonder, Jason. Are you listening, Jace? Yeah, what's up, then? Okie dokie. This is from Yonko Abs. He says, or she says, I'm sure it's a he. Um, who would you sell and replace from our current midfielders, given that it's been a problem area on the pitch for us? Um, are you going to say Coquelin in this? Oh, of course I am. <laughs> you know, I, I like my midfielders to be able to play football. Yeah. You know, you, you, you know, we, we didn't go and get Kante last season. Did you read that thing that we had a deal agreed for Conte and the other player for 15 million and then Wenger said, oh, no. Uh, yeah, uh, look, I, is that, I, I'm, is that true? I don't know. I have no idea. But but the point is, we could have gone for Conte last season, you know, um, an absolute midfield dynamo, which would have given us solidity and continuity in midfield. We stuck with Coughlin. You know, we, we knew what he was. I You know, I do, you know, he's a bad footballer. I like the guy. He, he comes on, he tries to play with discipline and application, but he's just not good enough. Um, Santi Cazola's at an age and, you know, he's not going to come back from that injury and give you a full season. I'm sorry, he's just not. So those are the two I, I, I would ship out and bring others in. You know, when you look at Ramsey and Jack's um, uh, injury issues, they, they have to be looked at. You know, as much as I love Aaron Ramsey and I love Jack Wilshire, you know, there's there's constant issues with them. But the the two were the two which I suppose would make an instant impact in replacing is Cochrane first and foremost, no ifs, no buts. Seventy grand a week for falling over. <laughs> Somebody somewhere is winding me up. You know, oh, I, while, while we're on this, if can you in under a minute explain how when Cochrane come in and saved our ass two seasons ago, he was fantastic and why he's not now? Yeah, right, because he was just asked to sit in front of the back four. Right, so okay. if that's the point and now he's not been asked yeah, to sit yeah. in the back four, why are you blaming him and not Wenger for moving him? But look, you need more than somebody to just sit in front of the back four. They have to. You look at Kante, Kante will tackle here, there, everywhere. He's all over the pitch, okay? He doesn't need to be the best distributor of the ball. But you have to be able to do it in all areas of the pitch. And then, you know, when he's got that smaller pitch to work with, his angles are bang on. You know, he, he's able to judge things properly. As soon as you put him further up the park, you know, the, the angles aren't the same. He's not as effective, you know. When I remember being the beginning of the season, people are telling me, oh, <clears throat> he's playing further up to win the ball back. Well, there's only one instance I can remember, and that's West Ham away. You know, so often he, he just fails at it. He's, he slows the ball down with, with his passing motion as well. He's just not good enough. And, you know, I like the guy. He's, you know, he, to be fair, he did come in and he did really well for us. Okay. But 
you can't rely on Santi Cazorla to stay fit. He's at that age. He's a wonderful, wonderful footballer. But we, you know, we've been talking about putting in a, a system in place and playing to a system. Well, Santi Cazorla has a unique skill set. There's nobody else at the club who's got his um, uh, passing technique and his passing range, etc. So he's very unique. So you kind of need to bring in players who can, you know, who, are, who you can rotate at times when you need to. Now, you know, th- there are players in Europe available, okay? Um, uh, you know, <laughs> Chris will reel them off, okay? But you need, firstly, players who can play the game. Right? Not just tackle. They've got to be able to pass. They've got to be able to influence the game. You know, my big issue with Mesut Ozil at the moment is he's not influencing the game enough. For £42 million to the player and his skill set, he should be influencing the game. Well, Coughlin has no influence on the game at the, either. He's got to go. You need somebody who can who has more of a skill set. And with Santi, I'm sorry, you know, you know, he's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful footballer. But... Yes. If if he's going to be injured for more than half the season, same as he is, and at his age, now's the right time to change. And But then you have to look at Jack and you're going to have to have a look at Ramsey as well. it breaks break my heart to see those two go. But, you know, Coughlin, Santi, Jack and Ramsey, the, the, you know, and LNA as well. You know, we can look at all of them if we're, if we're very honest, but there's two easy wins then, in my opinion. Jace breathe. If anybody can time that and then let Sorry. Jason know at Jason Davies seventy one, let him know that how long that minute lasted. I've carpentered the hell out of it. You, you certainly have, Rami. As you're our guest, have you got any views on the midfield or anything that Jason has just said? No, I agree with him. Uh, oh, so don't start that, please. Yeah, Great, do, that'll, that'll uh, go on his no, CV. But the thing is, like, you need to. I, I, I mean, you need to have someone. I, I love El Nenny, and every time he has been on the pitch, he has done really well. The games I have seen, uh, I think he could be something. But you need someone that the leader in the middle. And uh, the players you mentioned are very injury prone. And that's what the club doesn't need at the moment. I mean, if you have a uh, team that goes really well. Yeah, you could have Asante away for a few months. You could have Ramsey away for a few months. But you don't. You are not in that position at the moment. And the problem is, Rami, you know, it, we're, like last season, he re-signed Rzitski and Arteta. I mean, what was that about? You know, we knew they were injury prone. They're, yeah. they're out all the season. So the pressure on the likes of Santi, on the likes of Ramsey, is always on them. So they've never got yeah. a chance to stay fit. Yeah. You know, you, you bring in a couple of guys who are durable, who are resilient, mm. and all of a sudden, you know, Ramsey's got time to stay fit. Jack has got time, you know, yeah. they've got time to recover properly. Yeah. We, and the thing is, that you mentioned Ozil, uh, uh the short spell you were talking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I think if Ursel would have been at the club when I was there, he would have been much more influenced, the, uh, the team, I mean. Uh, but I don't know where to start, to be honest. I mean, you need those players, but to get 100% from them and get, 100% quality that you know they have. I I don't know where to start. I mean, you need those players, but at the same time, you need to have the players around him as well. If you look at Koscielny at the national team, they are doing really well. They are not training every day for a year like they do at the club. Uh, Ozil in Germany is doing really well. I mean, then... There is something wrong, but I don't have the key to what is wrong. Rami, just a quick question for me. If, uh, say, hypothetically, Barcelona came in for a 20 million bid for Ramsey and Man City came in with a 20 million bid for Wilshire, would you get rid of them both? Yeah, I would. That's fair enough. Danny, as you were? 
Right, question for Gimli. See if you don't Davis or Carpenter this. It is uh, one of two questions we've got over Wilshire. Dom's going to get the next one. Um, Noma, who sends in the great questions, she says, is it time to sell Wilshire? He's going nowhere slowly, in brackets, on one leg. That's very good. Also, he should have gone abroad on loan for a better football and better education. And would I think that probably would have made him a better player. What's your thoughts on it, Kim? Uh, first of all, I believe... When he moved, he actually wanted to uh, play himself back into the England setup, and so he did actually only want a move to somewhere in this country. So that well, would have Roma been... or someone in Italy. Yeah, Ro- as well. Roma did come in for him very late on, but I think it was a choice between Roma. It was on deadline day, wasn't it? And it was between Roma and Bournemouth, and I think we were all a bit surprised when he went Bournemouth. But you can understand why because uh, when he got dropped. Yeah, he got dropped um, from the England setup, didn't he? And uh, I think he was all a, a bit upset about that and uh, he wanted to get back into the team. But in terms of Wilshire, um, I was one of the people that when we had Diaby and we were just kept offering contract after contract after contract, I was one of the people screaming the loudest. And I'd be a hypocrite um, when it seems like we're doing the same with Jack Wilshire. Uh, I think, what's he on now? He's got easily 80 grand a week. Something like that. And I think we're playing... Um quite a bit of his wages while he's, he's at Bournemouth, yeah. aren't we? Uh, yeah. Don't don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure. We see, the, the club seems to be this great money-making machine, but on the flip side of it, they also seem to be able to spend lots and lots of money um, on players that they'll only get like seven or eight games a season out of. For me, I would rather get some money back on him and buy someone that is actually going to play more than you know a handful of games a season. As much as I love Jack and... Mm. You know, we've Plus, all... he's done nothing at Bournemouth, really, has he? No, he, he's been steady, I would say, mm. was the word. He's, Which he's is not, not what we want. But in a team like Bournemouth, you would expect him to be a shining light. And has he been? If someone who have an equivalent kind of player at the same place um, type um, position in his career, imagine if Ramsey went and played a season with Bournemouth, what he would do there. He'd be yeah. banging in. Uh, slightly different players, I know. But, Ram- but Wilshire does rate himself as a more attacking midfielder. You... Take Danny Welbeck and put him at Bournemouth. I bet you he gets a few goals. Yes. And, uh, you, uh, can, you can turn it around. If uh, he haven't been at Arsenal, he have only been at Bournemouth, would you have bought him? No. No. That's actually a very good way to look at it. Yeah, that, certainly that is. A good way yeah. to look at it. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, Diaby, you mentioned him. He went to Marseille on a free last season. Does he, he play played... many more games than he plays for us? He played three games last season. Um, three in the league didn't finish any of them he played one 90 minutes in the French Cup this season he played the first two league games of the season didn't finish either and he's not played since sad so sad poor bloke lovely bloke as well right one for Dom um, from Anthony Lewani he says as Jack Wilshire only only has a hairline fracture is Dom confident he will be back for pre-season so Dom before you say that just tell us about the uh, what you put in the WhatsApp group two days ago before it was announced what had happened and then what turned out what had happened go on show off um well you know the the initial report was that the, nothing showed up on the the initial x-ray and it took a CT scan to show that there was something wrong and so you know that just made me think that it must be a, another hairline fracture in in the fibula, which is the non-load bearing bone in your leg, which Danny then replied and said that he had a triple hairline fracture in one of his legs and had a cast on it. And it's given him no issues ever since. And I thought, <laughs> you don't even use your legs. You're in a fucking wheelchair. <laughs> now we everybody no gets afterwards. a really good joke. <laughs> Jeez. It's true though. 10 weeks I was in the cast. Triple, yeah. triple green stick, they called it. Should have put you in a wheelie bin. <laughs> Oi, your box, you. I'm being, Tell I'm everybody being picked why you're on. there, Danny. It's because you sat down 20 years ago and you couldn't be bothered to get back up again. No, it's because I crashed my Merc into a lamppost. <laughs> he forgot He forgot to get back up. <laughs> I was like, do 10 mile an hour. Oi, don't, don't pick on me. I'm telling my mum she'll come around and slap your legs, Jace. Uh, oh, I, just thought, move, move your I thought it was funny. Danny's, Danny's comparing himself to a professional athlete. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not FIFA, is it? <laughs> oh, that last but anyway, time yeah, a bit Jack, too long. Jack's leg break. Um, this one, it, and I, I said at the time as well, it completely depends on whether it's going to need surgery or not. The initial sort of word is that it won't, and if that's the case, then it's, it's honestly not that big of a deal, and he should be completely fine, being it's not a load-bearing uh, bone that is fractured. 
and it depends how high up there's a there's a part of the lower part of the fibula that's part of the ankle joint which is what he had an issue with last time look the thing is with jack and i've said this before I don't think his bones are made from anything different to yours or mine. The way that he plays invites these sort of tackles in these areas of his legs. And it was that buffoon at Manchester United that stepped on his ankle and broke it. Now, any single player that had the same thing happen to them would have suffered the same injury. Um, it's just the, the style that this kid plays. He hangs onto the ball so late that he's going to attract these types of tackles a lot more than most other players. And so, you know, for the most part, it's not necessarily his body letting him down. It's a style of play that's that's sort of, you know, causing a lot of these issues. The thing is with Jack as well, this year he didn't really have any setbacks as far as soft tissue injuries go. And that's the big one. If you start to have injuries to joints like ankles and you start to mess with the, you know, um, the mobility of certain joints, it starts to put load differently through your body. And that's when soft tissue injuries can happen. And so he hasn't really suffered any of those. So if there's no surgery that's going to affect any of that, he should actually be fine for preseason. But we'll have to wait and see because sometimes these hairline fractures are really tricky and they don't like healing themselves. So let's just hope. Rami, when you were 27, um, it was Christmas Eve 2002, you uh, you broke your tibia and fibula on your right leg, didn't you? Yeah, well, did. How did you do it and what was your recovery like? Uh, I got kicked... Uh, and I broke it quite low as well, and that's not good because of the healing process. Uh, the higher up uh, you break it, the better, because it's the blood uh, that heals the bone. And the further away from the heart uh, the, uh, the break is, the harder it's to heal. Um, and... Uh, the recovery went pretty well. Uh, I came back, I remember I came back to the pre. I broke it Christmas Eve 2002. I came back to the pre-season uh, and uh, we had a like a light training and I got a ball kicked on uh, my toe and I felt something strange. Uh, it didn't hurt. Uh, it was a strange feeling. So uh, Gary Lewin uh, came to me and said, jump on one leg. And I couldn't jump. And then I was scared. And then he pressed on where I broke it. And it hurt so bad. Uh, so I thought I broke it again. Uh, but it showed it was the nerves that had uh, damaged. And that's why I couldn't jump. Uh, because it's the nerves that give the signal to the muscle. And when you don't get that signal, you can't. the muscle won't work. So I had to go back to the gym and start to work with uh, some footwork for a month or two. And uh, that I think that thing made it more difficult for me because <clears throat> my first reserve team game was in November, I think, the next year. So it took me almost a year to come back. And then obviously I needed a few more games and stuff, and um, it was frustrating. Uh, at the same time, uh, we that season we went unbeaten. Uh, but the first part was uh, frustrating, the first time, because David Seaman uh, uh, got injured uh, and Stuart Taylor was playing quite a lot. Um, and I knew that if I would have been fit, I would have played because the boss obviously played me before Stewart uh, when I was fit. Mm. And then Stuart Taylor got injured. I think he, he, yeah. says he, he broke his finger. And yeah, then 18-year-old um, Craig Holloway was on the bench. Yeah, he was on the bench. And then they took... Uh, um, the boss had to take in Varmus, I think. From uh, oh, Lance. the French goalkeeper. Yeah, for six months. Yeah, never played for us though. <coughs> no, he didn't. Uh, if you want, but it, it, the first know. time was uh, frustrating because I knew that uh, I was going. To, I saw Stewart play, and um, of course I was happy for him. But of course I wanted to play. 
Yeah, it's hard stuff. Dom, is there any way they since then has they got any more ways that they they treat this? Because you've been a, a sports rehabilitation person. Has has the the way of fixing Rami's injury changed since then? In what has it been fifteen years? Um, yeah, I think the rehab process has changed quite a lot. It's a lot more intense. There's a lot more science around the process, but the healing of of breaking bones is, doesn't really change. And he's spot on. The 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 you know if you tear a muscle high up near a, a tendon, it takes a long time to recover because the blood flow is a lot more limited to those areas. And it's the same thing with with bone structure. But that's why these little hairline fractures can be so tricky. If they don't heal themselves, you've got to go in with surgery and screw things, and and that can really you know, it, almost like what happened with Santi Cazola, where he had this injury and it just wouldn't heal. They hoped that it would and it didn't. So then he has to go and have surgery and then you're out and it's, you know, surgery is kind of your last your last option when it comes to that kind of stuff. But I'd be interested to know, like, this is the thing that it, it's actually nice having Rami on for him to explain the process that he went through where he thought that he was OK, comes back out to training and figures that he can't jump properly anymore. And this is why the rehab process isn't clear cut. This is why it is so difficult to get players back out. And and the level that you need to be at to play Premier League football now is just, it is so difficult to maintain that kind of fitness level every week, especially if you're you're out for any period of time and you're trying to get back up to speed halfway through a season. It's, it's incredibly difficult. So... Uh, Rami, did you have any soft tissue injuries or anything after you broke your leg? No, I didn't actually. I I felt really well. Uh, I had soft tissue issues after I had my uh, cruciate. Yeah. Uh, uh, then I had soft tissue problems in my back, uh, <clears throat> my hamstring. Yeah. Uh, and did that they, is was... that where they took? Did they take the graft for your ACL from your hamstring? Yeah, they did. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you... and it it was uh, pretty tough. I mean, that was more difficult uh, than the when I broke my leg. When you break your leg, it's it's not that complicated as a knee. No, uh, I've said that many times that the ACL yeah. injury that Theo Walcott suffered is actually a lot harder to recover from than yeah. than Aaron Ramsey's leg break, and yeah. and it's hard for people to. To imagine that because you see Aaron Ramsey's leg dangling there all floppy and it's very visual yeah. and it's very, you know, it's very in your face. Yeah. And then you can't actually see anything structurally wrong with a knee when you yeah. rupture an ACL. But the process, yeah. because it's part of a joint, it changes your gait. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, yeah, you, you start to suffer the soft tissue injuries no. afterwards. And the thing is, the, the problem I had after that surgery was that I, when I trained so hard... Uh, when I was trying to get back, uh, I didn't reach 100%. I mean, I trained, I never trained harder, but when I trained, tried to train a little bit harder, I got too heavy. I mean, uh, the legs, it's like a preseason. You're down in the gutter. And when I tried to ease the training, I lost balance and uh, so either way, how, either, either way I did, I never, it was a bit, I don't know if you say that in English, but uh, it, it was a momentum 22. Can you say that? Touch 22, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like yep. If I trained harder, I got heavy. And if I trained less, I got, uh, I lost other the things. sharpness, yeah, yeah. The um, the training and the rehab for those types of injuries really has come along a long way. Yeah. Back in you know a, a while ago, it, rupturing an ACL quite often was the end of some people's careers. Whereas, yeah. you know, now some players are able to, or a lot of players are able to come back and make pretty much full recoveries. But yeah. I think I think if you ask anybody that's had that particular surgery, they will they will say that they've never felt quite the same. Yeah. I, I never felt the same after my uh, knee. Uh, I, I felt I lost balance uh, when I made that surgery. It, I, yeah. well, you have so much muscle deterioration and a lot yeah. of those, the, the pathways from your brain to the muscles to fire, which yeah. are all proprioceptors, go to sleep. Yeah. So, I, I'm, you know, it feels like you're having to learn to walk again. Yeah, exactly. 
I, and the problem is, you know, even though the technology has advanced so much, I mean, I, I've had the same injury, you know, they're doing where, where I had my, you know, my kneecap taken off and you know, the scar is so big on my knee and what have you. Now, they can do a lot of it keyhole wise. Yeah. But, you know, the, the recovery from it, you know, my, my muscle mass has never been the same. Yeah. You know, I've now got acute arthritis in my knee, no cartilage whatsoever. It's bone on bone. Yeah. Uh, and people don't understand, um, unless you have it, the repercussions it has on the rest of your body. As you say, the balance scores, yeah. things you take for granted. Yeah. You know, your, uh, your brain... That was my biggest problem. I mean... Uh, the balance. I mean, yeah. if I stand on my right leg, uh, I'm not as secure even today uh, yeah. uh, comparing to my left leg. Yeah. So. It, it, it's difficult, isn't it? Because, you know, you, your brain tells you you can do something yeah. and, and, and your body's telling you, no, it's not happening. Yeah. 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 And, and funny enough, Nikki Wilson uh, has asked a question on uh, which which I think is quite pertinent to this. And Nikki asks Emma, do you question the integrity of referees? Now, I, I, I say this because of the number of bad challenges and the Eduardo injury, the Abu Dhabi injury, you know, the amount of bad challenges we have during a game over the last 10 years, especially, you know, you know when we had Vieira on the pitch, it, it didn't happen. As soon as we lost the Vieira, the Saul Campbells, etc., all of a sudden mm. people saw us as fair game and, We've we've picked up these nasty injuries along the line because yeah. of very poor refereeing, in my opinion. Do you, do you yeah. think we we suffer from poor refereeing decisions? Uh, I think I think it has become much more difficult for the referees as well because the game is much more faster now than uh, twenty years ago. Uh, I don't know. It's always easy to. I have never like blamed the referees. I mean, over a season, it it comes and goes. I mean, and some seasons you are unlucky. You have a lot of nasty injuries. I mean, but I don't the, know. I, the reason I say it is because you know we yeah. we've seen um, Xhaka get yellow carded and red carded for challenges. Yeah. In exactly the same game, we'll have a similar um, a challenge on one of our players from the opposition, yes. and it'd be let go. I, yeah. I, I, and that's the bit I have difficulty with at the moment. I don't yeah. like blaming referees. I, I'm, I'm yeah. you know, I think you're in charge of your own destiny on the pitch. Yeah. But when we see, you know, Anthony Taylor Monday night allowing, you know, allowing certain challenges to go by without yeah. any uh, uh, and repetitive um, fouling as well. Go by without the yellow card. I I have to question their integrity. Yeah. No, I. I the thing is, uh, I don't know. I I haven't seen. I I I mean, it's always now. It doesn't matter if it's at our club or other clubs. But when you get those nasty injuries, it's so it's heartbreaking. I mean, yeah. uh, especially when you have gone through it yourself. Uh, when you have, because I can't watch it when I see those things. It's it's so difficult for me after my uh, leg injury. Yeah. Uh, and the same with the the cruciate. It's like because I can feel, I know what he have, the way he have to come back. Uh, yeah. It's so hard for me to see those. You things. you you remember the feeling at the time, don't you? Yeah, you I do. That? Yeah, I do. And. Uh, I was lucky, to be fair. I, I, when I broke my leg, uh, I didn't feel that much pain because uh, my, all my nerves as well. For me, it was more the whole leg got numb. Yeah. Uh, I didn't feel the pain that I can see other players feel. Uh, for me, it was more like... Uh, I think, uh, And I got it explained to me. It was because uh, the nerves got cut as well. So if you the nerves get cut, uh, cut, uh, then you don't feel the pain. It's like uh, if you lose an arm, uh, you don't feel the pain because the nerves don't find each other. Hmm. All right, um, we've got one more quick question each. Gimli? Yes. Right, Billy AFC. What are the chances of Arsenal signing Mbappe? 
Um, Chris is the man to answer this one, but I'm sure there's going to be plenty of big clubs in Europe that are are, are queuing up to sign him. I, I would have to question, with lack of Champions League football, whether we'd be able to um, attract a player of his calibre. All right, Jace, um, from Jai MC, are our players in bad form or are they going stale? Do the lack of quality support, training and tactical direction from the staff or is it confidence? Good question. I think it's the latter leading to the to the first point. I think I, I, I think the manager's gone stale, to be honest with you. I, I hate to say it. You know, I love Arsene Wenger, but I don't think he's bought well. I don't think he's reacted well. I think the tactics, you know, we, we, we've seen ourselves lose games where we should not be losing them. Um, we see, we've we seen some bang average performances and the lack of stability in the midfield and the lack of continuity has led, you know, it's a combination of things leading to poor form. And I think there's panic in the players and I think they they they've really suffered from it. Okay, right. Um, question for Dom: um, Would changing the coaches make for a major difference next season if we kept Wenger? No. <laughs> Straight. No, to the I mean, point. It's, I mean, it's very, um, very well kind of documented and known that that Arsene Wenger's the the man, so to speak. And even if people came in with different ideas and different philosophies, I don't think it's going to make any difference to to um, the way that he wants it. He needs to be the one that changes. And I personally don't think that he is capable of doing what is necessary to compete anymore. Um, And like I said, I just personally look around at the other clubs that are doing well um, and see a common trend of systematic approach. And we don't have that. So. Okay. All right. Last question is for you. Rami from John Anthony says, if Wenger stays for two years, can you see us dropping out of the top six, let alone the top four? You mean the next season? Um, the next two, yeah, for, for next season, the one after. Are you worried that we might not even make top six? No, I think we will make top six. I think because we have the muscle, we're still an attractive club. I think we can uh, buy quality. Um and I think the manager is, when he sits down after the season, see what he needs, and he sees it's like his, probably his last years, he will uh, get the quality to at least come better than this season. And uh, then I think after that, he will uh, let someone else to handle the club. Okay, very good. Gimli, back yes. to you. Uh, slightly extended questions, but it's always good to hear an ex-pro's um, version and uh, ideas on what's going on, isn't it? Yeah, as well, when we have Remy on him, we, we like to utilise him and, and get his knowledge, especially... especially <laughs> I don't all know the, about uh... the knowledge. I feel so old school because when you look back when I was at the club, it's so many years ago, so... Oh, you're... we still love you, don't we? Like, I was just thinking now when I was hearing you talk and... For me, whenever you hear an ex-player still talk about Arsenal as us, it just fills me with joy. It really not, does. I, you're not that old, Rami. Me and Jason are both older than you. Yeah, but I mean, when I was at the club, I mean, and uh. then uh, I, I agree with everything you have said. Yeah, the football have changed and everything and uh, the tactical things have changed. But that makes you feel old as well, because then you look back uh, 2004, it was like 13 years ago. <laughs> uh, you're fine yeah um, uh, but it's uh, and you see the new young players coming in and yeah but it's, it's uh, as long as the football process uh, progress I'm happy nothing wrong with that um, we should talk about Man City I want some predictions from all of you of course it's the big game at Wembley at the weekend 3 um, o'clock on Sunday on BT Sport it certainly is. Shame. Um, how come? How come the scum have managed to constantly get themselves on the BBC, and yet we are always relegated to BT Sport? Because they do it to annoy us. They do. I'm sure they do. Um, anyway, Danny, let's get a prediction. 
Um, I think we're going to get. Hopefully, we're going to lose because I do not want to get into the final. Oh, and then play. You shush your, uh, you your nonsense. I do not want to be part of Chelsea's double or lose to the Spuds in the final. So I'm going to say, hopefully, we will lose this um, uh, four three to them. So a slobber knocker of a game, and I'm going to go Sanchez yet again. Because, uh, shame be on great. you, Danny. Shame I'm, I'm on you. You shush, you. you shush yourself. Oh, you want to lose to those two? Do you think we can beat the two in best informed teams in the league at the final? I, I think oh, that Arsenal don't. Tottenham on its day is a complete lottery. <sighs> lottery schmottery, yeah, it's fixed. It's like when you do the lottery down the social, it's fixed. You make sure that you win it. I don't. I know, I'm just, I'm just making I, accusations. I haven't, I haven't got my hands in the petty cash either. No, you're not allowed. No. no. Jace. Um, 3 2 to the Arsenal. Uh, Ramsey opening the score. Oh, Jesus. Hey. Sugar on top of it. Just to make Stop. it a little bit more ridiculous. Um, since I got last week's prediction spot on and I'm and, in form, I'll be, I'll be optimistic and I'll say 2 1 to Arsenal and Alexis. Oh, fuck off. Sorry, Rami. No swearing. No Every week someone no does this to me when I The appear. first thing he said to me tonight was, don't swear. I, I, I dropped a C-bomb last time Rami yeah, it was on. took quite a long time. <laughs> <laughs> killing him not to swear. It is. I no, he's got to the 89th minute and he's been sent yeah. off. Oh, boo. I've Two for dead. Noia. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, Rami, what's your prediction for the game at the weekend? Uh, I think we win 3-1. Uh, Ozil. Fantastic. I'm going to go 2-1, just like Dom, but I'm going to change from Alexis to... Don't say Giroud, you'll get booed. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm going to go uh, Ozil. Ooh. Yes, definitely. Um, right then, all that's really left then is a shout-out. So, Danny... I am going to, every week I struggle to get people to do the shout out, gentlemen's nod too. So what I'm going to do, um, recently, load, loads and loads of you have been going to our YouTube channels and getting really involved in the chat, in the thing, in the, the chat boxes at the bottom of it. And I think the last one we had about 2,100 comments, according to um, YouTube, that's what it says. I can't see how there's 2,100 down there, but that's what it says. So every week I'm going to go and pick the three best ones that are the most interesting, got the most involved. So this week it's Thunder Road, True Guna and Boy Tendayo who is apparently going to teach me how to say Eddie's surname properly because I keep getting it wrong. Yeah, so make sure you go to the YouTube and then go and um, chat in the comments. Me and Gimli are always in there. And uh, you can be as rude as you want to as so we don't ever delete anything, do we, Gim? No, no. So no. A couple of, couple of morons last week, but let Thunder go Road's there. always very good, isn't he? he? He certainly is, yes. And I thought that picture that he has for his bio on Twitter or the YouTube chat live chat was from um, something like uh, one of the what's the Scottish one with uh, Mel Gibson, Braveheart. Braveheart. It's Braveheart. not. It's it, I was just I was just looking at the Guardian and they've got it there as one of their little pictures. It's a it's a shenanigans outside of a, a North London derby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. So this is the bloke. Yeah. So Pierre, people go go and have a chit chat in the YouTube and then we'll get joined in. And we do not censor anything and we do not delete anything. No, we don't. As rude as you want. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs down. We don't care. We'll still be here next week. Yeah. But but do leave a comment because we like interacting with you. You'll (laughs) normally get the obligatory comment from me saying, "Cool, glad that sexy Gimli's back." And we we usually reply with our own accounts. We don't do it with a pod account. Just so you know who we are. No, exactly. Um, Right, my shout outs this week. I asked for two people. Um, and the two people that plenty popped up and thank you to all who tweeted me. But the two I'm going to pick this week are at Brian underscore leather and uh, good friends of mine who also do a podcast. It's at Gooners in USA. So go and check them out. Uh, Jace. Yeah, mine's for um, it's another Aussie guy, funny enough, Um, a boy from Sydney. um, I don't know his name is, but on uh, Twitter, he's under Anon, A-N-O-N, at Kofi, K-O-F-I, Anania, A-N-N-A-N-Y-A, that might be his name, I have no idea, but Kofi Anan, I doubt it, you know, but he's, he's a great follower, he loves the football, he loves the rugby, he loves sport. You should have got Danny to say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to insult the guy. Oh, coffee no, and Because my knees are perfectly good. 
<laughs> I'm careful on a very low mileage and my ankles and my hips. Oh, you haven't seen wow. your knees in 10 years, either have you? No, I used mirrors. <laughs> you are so deluded. Dom? Well, this is the moment I have all been waiting for. Uh, John Welsh's terrible subpar beard is getting a shout out once again. Oh, shocker. Haven't even seen so much as a uh, a whiff of a photo of his of his um well, let's be honest, he looks like a little bit of a tramp, doesn't he, at the moment? Um, so I wish his beard all the best. It's probably in about the same kind of form as Arsenal at the moment, which isn't good. No. And the other one is a fellow Australian, Brendan Carroll, who tweeted that he him. wanted me to come on this week. So he he's was one of the two fan. people. <laughs> Brendan Carroll's a great follow. Yeah, he's, he's great. At Dorito Brother. So go give that guy a bit of a, a, bit of a follow. boy as well. His avatar does look, does look like he's been pulled over for the police for um, putting Shipham's crab paste into John's beard. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Rami, is there anyone you want to give a shout out to? Uh, I want to, uh, to the club actually, that I left to after Arsenal, Brighton, Seagulls, uh, going up to Premier League. Yes. Uh, I was there for three months and uh, it's a lovely city, lovely town. And uh, it's going to be lovely to see them next year at the now Premier League. You, now you know why he hates Plymouth so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Right then, Danny, was there in any other news? Was there anything we had to cover? Any podcasts or blogs we need to watch or listen to? No, there's there's not been blogs for a couple of weeks. We think that because um, Jeff is really, really busy at work. He's, he's now running Canada. And so... Uh, yeah, there's not much. I think his exact words were, uh, the current atmosphere at Arsenal is not something people want to blog about. <laughs> no, <it's carpet laughs> just, the, the blog will just be uh, a sad face of a gooner crying with another gooner strangling him, probably. I tell you what, Jeff Holofan should be Emperor of Canada. I think he is. He's a top he'd man. Have to, he'd have to take the title off of me. I've already taken over. Uh, oh, hold up, you Hold up, yeah. You're an immigrant over there. Be careful. He, he lives on a little island by himself. There's only yeah, three it, people over it's there. It's his own island. It's all of <laughs> island. It's a little bit like when you used to sail the 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 um the convicts used to go to Australia and they'd sail past this rock and they had one bloke chained to the rock there and he used to throw his own poo at the, the ship as it went by. Was that you? I, no, I saw Billy Connolly talking about it in his, his world tour of Australia many years he ago. Used to, he used to swear, didn't he, at the, at the yep. boats going past That's as it. well. Yeah. I think it was uh, one of Dom's relations, obviously. I've Probably. sailed past there. I have sailed past there. Oh, great days. No, that's it, Gimli. You, you are free to wrap it up. Fantastic. So all that's left then is to thank my wonderful guests tonight. Uh, Jace, Dom, Rami, and of course, Danny, you have to be here. So do you. I do indeed. Mm. Right then. So that was a Burkamp Wonderlands podcast. Thank you so much for listening and keep it Arsenal. Hello! Thank you so much for listening and keep it Arsenal. Hello! Why always, like, when we're, like, either starting the show or ending the show, you come on with your typical loudmouth bollocks shouting over everybody. It's, to be honest with you, Jace, it's tedious. Tedious. It needs to grow up. Be in your fridge, so behave yourself. You turn up once a month, you're like a pyramid. Oh, no! Oh, I recognise that. They still got the screen grabs from last week. Well, the audio files of your voice chatting over everybody. I just think, think it's rubbish. a bit rich that the two people that have got the worst swearing record on the pod have both come at me and said, Dom, no swearing tonight. It's like Bill Cosby telling me not to touch people inappropriately. <laughs> and I haven't said hello to him for ages. I haven't said hello to who? Ages. Well, to, um, uh, to Gimli, I haven't, I haven't done that to him for ages. You've Last met him. That's the pinnacle. It's all downhill after me. Yeah, it's, it? it's all downhill it, after you. No fairness, I did say hello to him when I met him. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's polite, isn't it? He oh. did. He did. It's true. He did. <laughs> it's a nice day, that was. Yes, it was. I had a very good day. Uh, 
Rami, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate you and your time as much as thank ever. Thank you for and having me. Really, it's always we, good. We do mean it when we say you are literally the nicest person we speak oh, to on this podcast. And you are you. such a gent. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That bless me. You're a fan favourite, or a listener favourite, sorry. I bet you're going to win the award again this year. I hope so. <laughs> I'm going to fix it if he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> you know an interesting stat that I looked up earlier? I've oh. scored the same amount of professional goals in football as Rami has. Oh, that's good. <laughs> How do you know he has plenty of goalkeepers score goals? Have you nearly scored any, Rami? Own goals. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, you I, I wikipedia that earlier and I was quite proud of myself. You've not done a Schmeichel and ran down the other end in the 95th minute and nodded one in? No, I haven't. I haven't. Did you ever try and take a penalty? Just, you know, nudge Thierry out the way, say, you know, I've got this, don't yeah, worry about it. I got this. No, I haven't. I'm too shy for that. <laughs> There's a goalkeeper in Brazil who used to take all the free kicks and the penalties. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, he's very good. He's hated by most Brazilians, though. My friend who's an Arsenal fan hates him. Right, he's Danny. Brazilian. Danny, I have to shoot. Yes, thank you very much, Gimli. Yeah. That's all right. Thank you again. Thank you, Rami. Thank you, James. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Dom. Cheers, Rami. Uh, Thanks, mate. Cheers. I really do appreciate it. Let me know when it's right. up and Cheers. I'll uh, retweet the hell out of it. Lovely. Okay. Hey, Jen. Right. Jen. Yes. Go fuck yourself. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Love wonderful. you. Love you too. <laughs>